But Jesus does something uh, strange. He takes his spit and he spits on the ground below him and he makes mud. And he takes the mud and he just wipes it on the boy's face, just smears it over the boy's eyes on his face. And uh, can you imagine? You were here, you, were, you, you heard the voice of God, and you're in the Lord's presence, and that happens to us so much. But uh, all you got is mud on your face when you get done. When we started here that first day, and it's the rain started coming, and we knew what we were capable of. We knew what we came to do. But after that first day, I felt like I had mud on my face, you know? But, uh, but the journey had just began for this boy. And if you research the story out at the temple, they've got six water pots that hold about 30 gallons each that are there for the Jews to wash as they go, before they go into the temple. And I thought, well, you know, why didn't he tell this boy just to turn around and wash his face in these six water pots? It's just a few steps away. You know, blind boy and everything. And then, then you think the pool of Bethesda was just right around the corner, just a few hundred feet away. But uh, he told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And if you look on a map, the pool of Siloam is, uh, is quite a what journeys from the temple. Uh, a lot of cobblestone roads, a lot of sharp rights and less uphills to the other side of the city. In fact, the religious leaders of that day, even you couldn't walk over three-fourths of a mile on the Sabbath day. It was a, it was a sin. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jesus knew the distance, and he knew that it was more than that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So this boy had to make this walk with mud on his face. He was blind, going somewhere he'd probably never been before, by himself. Mm -hmm. Here you are, just out doing it? Yeah. I'm here because I believe the Lord wanted me to come. Just want to do my part in the kingdom of God to help further the kingdom across the world. Because I love doing it, helping people. I said, do you want me to come home? She said, no. I said, do what the Lord's got you to do. And your point is, I guess it's The all... point is, is we're here for the Lord. Here for the Lord. God bless you. Thanks. Thanks. Missionaries go home, and the music stops playing, and the worship stops. You know, you got to make a walk by yourself sometimes. You might have mud on your face. You know, the Bible doesn't say. All it says is he got a touch from Jesus, and he heard Jesus' voice. That's all it tells us. When it tells us at the end, he, he, he came away seeing doesn't tell us anything about his journey. You know, we don't know what happened when he was on that journey. He might have got discouraged. He might have got halfway and say, is this worth it? He might have said, I'm just going to wipe the mud off my face. I've had enough of this. People making fun of him. Look at that kid there. He, he thinks he's going to get his healing. He's just walking around with mud on his face. You know, that's when the real, real journey and the real walk begins. And when we pray today, that's what, that's what I want to pray for. It's what happens after this church is built. As one day we come back here to visit this church, Lord, we will find the village, Lord, living for Christ. Yes, Lord. 